All right, I'm QRG. I'm RNA. So we're the QRG and RNA UNA Crafting Podcast. That's right. And we have a lot of stuff for today. So um, first, I guess, adventures. Got any adventure you would like to share? Because I have a lot of crap to talk about. No, you go ahead. You talk about all your crap. Uh, I took my husband to Seattle, and he hasn't been there before, but I used to live there, so I got to take him to a couple of my favorite places, but we miss out on a whole lot of stuff, and I was surprised that there are bike lanes that have their own stoplights. They're just a random thing. Stoplights for your bikes, because they can't apparently obey regular stoplights. Um, and half of that time was spent at the Comic-Con, Emerald City Comic-Con, where we purchased lots of artwork. Much, much artwork because we need stuff for our walls, more stuff for our walls, always. And Mike was insulted by a velociraptor, but science, it was science. Mm -hmm. A science, true science fact. What does that say? That facial hair is... A certainly a choice. Certainly a choice. It is certainly a choice. It's certainly a choice to have facial hair. <laughs> and then more cool, just adorable and disturbing artwork, because we like this kind of stuff. And a wizard. A wizard robot. Okay, that's the art. And I got this awesome new book about pugs. The pug and it's adorable. And he drew me a picture. Oh. Well, I stood there and watched because... I didn't get to see the picture. Oh, it was cute. That is cute. And we have a pug, of course, as you've seen on previous episodes. So cute. we have a small pug addiction. <laughs> And I also um, went to, on a yarn crawl with some of the girls around town. And on the yarn crawl, oh wait, back to Seattle, I had to hit up a local yarn store and get what they said was a local dyer. So, Jorstad Creek, Iona Base, and the color is Rouge River, and it's just really, really pretty and soft. So... Yeah, I can't see. I'm too short. <laughs> We're just I'm gonna not, have to, you're just gonna have to live with the shortness and uh, it doesn't show yeah, it, it didn't show really the beans. It's very pretty. Good colors. And yes. then I also got hedgehog fibers just because I've never knit with them and the shop had a, a large selection. Um and it was called the Tea Cozy the Tea Cozy shop in uh, Ballard. It was really close to our um, Airbnb that we were staying in while we were there. So pretty. Yes, and this one's called Nutmeg. I like it. So I'll be knitting many more things. Okay, so then I also went on a yarn crawl here before the trip to Seattle. And I got yarn uh, the Stray Cat in uh, Greenwood. All right, Gypsy Girl Creations. The Stray Cat, is that the name of the, the yarn shop? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, the, the color's just 2038, so that's not that exciting. But look at it, it's pretty. It is pretty. Lots of beautiful so, colors. And then... We got some from Fa Yarns. Yeah. Fa Yarns. This one still has the colorway attached. Oh, it doesn't say what it is. But it's all the colors of the Harry Potter houses in a self-striping yarn. Then I got this, which I've lost the tag for already because I'm, I'm good at stuff. <laughs> but it's still pretty and ready to become socks. And it's the same. It's Fa Yarns. And then I've already made socks. Which I guess I can get to there. Well, no, whatever. Yeah. This is from the same shop, the same dyer, another colorway, Fa Yarns. And these already became socks on my trip. And I've already worn all the socks I'm going to show you today and washed them a couple times. So, but they're show. clean. They're clean right now, I swear. Do you want to show them? Well, this is my only new one, so oh. at FOs. I'll do the others at FOs. Okay. This just goes here. Okay. Um. That was a really quick recap of the adventure. Really okay. quick. So you went, right? yeah. You went, you saw some friends, you introduced them to your honey. Yeah, he got to meet some of my friends out there. Yeah. I didn't get to see everybody. Yeah. Of course, I only saw a couple people, and I drove around Ballard and Lake City a bit, the place I used to live. Good. I don't, for, I didn't remember the back route to Beacon Hill, so the night we got there all tired, I was like, I'm going to take the back road. And then we drove down the back road, and I was like, ah, this load doesn't look familiar at all. And then we got to a road I remembered, and we just, oh. just went ahead and checked into the Airbnb. <laughs> found out where you were. Well, I know I could find it eventually, but... lost. 
but I couldn't find the road I was looking for. I went a road too far past it. Anyways, whatever. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so that was fun, and Archie McPhee's, of course, is always a stop when we go, and Red Mill Burgers, and my favorite coffee place in the whole world, Sure Shot, which is now closed. They closed, like, two days after we got back from town. Sadness. It was very sad, so I made sure I had at least one cup from there every day that we were there. One day we went and picked up three cups at once and just put them in a fridge of the Airbnb so that I could have my coffee later because their coffee was so good and now they're all gone. Sad. It's very sad. That is sad. It's Mary, very sad. Mary has had some coffee today. Hi, I have, I don't know, several cups of coffee today. Several cups of coffee today. <laughs> Which is totally normal for me. Also. <laughs> She's ready for this podcast. I'm ready. I'm on it. <laughs> we have a question. We do have a question. Josie Bug. Wanted to know who would portray us in a made-for-TV movie. Yes. So we've discussed this. We have. First, we crowdsourced <laughs> amongst her children. <laughs> and they said, you know what? I drank too much coffee. What was her name already? Melissa McCarthy That's is right. who they said would pit- portray Mary. Yes. And then and I, I love thought her. about yeah. how much I love Melissa McCarthy. And how I would really love to have her portray me. And so we were going to duke it out to figure out who we would have, you know, her plate. And we well, thought, well, maybe we could do, like, Orphan Black style. She could have a different wig. You know, yeah, get some, yeah. Get some heels on so that she could portray me. Because, you know, like, like <laughs> foot tall heels. Because I'm a little. bit of a height difference. Um, but. <laughs> a little. But then we went yeah. to see Captain Marvel this morning and. Um, we saw the Captain Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. And I have to say that one of the previews that we saw had Rebel Wilson in it. And I thought. Why didn't she come to mind? Right. So I'm going to say I would have, I mean, it wouldn't be made for TV movie because these are like A, a stars, but um, I would have Rebel Wilson play me because she's fabulous. She owns herself. She's hilarious. And she's just wonderful. And yeah. then I'd be Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. I'd be like a mixture of her characters from like Gilmore Girls and from the new Ghostbusters. Well, yeah, but she, she would. Cross those. She would. And mix in some additional other weirdness and. But she's a good height for me, I feel. Yeah. And I think Rebel Wilson's a little taller, maybe. That's what we're going with. So, I don't so think I've yeah. seen them stand next to each other, but we could... We could I'm sure we could that look up. that up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. That's who we would have. That was question number one. Now we're going to do our FOs, and then we have more stuff after that. FOs meaning finish oh, objects. Oh, yeah. Projects. So, yeah. yeah let's do finish, finish objects. first. So, I um, showed a hat on a previous podcast and realized once I had it home and tried to put it on someone definitely did not fit me also did not fit my youngest child so it was way too small so I had to like rip it all back and redo it and I just finished it actually today so uh it's similar to the one that I've made before has all the different um cables and things in it it's very fabulous and it is now mine so and it I mean spring I don't know how much I'm going to really even need it, but... It'll still fit in the winter. It will it will fit my head in the winter. That's true. That is true. So it's done, and yeah. Oh, and also, yeah, I, have, uh, yeah. also I have a painting. The that amazing I created. painting. Let's, uh... Yeah. So I don't know how close we need to get with it, really, so people can get like I guess a, you can see the whole thing. You can. And the light is glaring off it a bit. But I saw this on, online um, a while back. And I wanted to replicate it. So it's a little bit different than the one that I had seen, but I do enjoy it. Um, I enjoy painting, creating in any way, but I really enjoy making that painting. So I actually have a commissioned um, painting that I will be working on for a friend of mine with the same the same owl. So nice. I'll be working on that. Mm-hmm. All right, and I have a lot of finished objects because I was on vacation. So this came first. These were my Desert Vista socks for the month. And it's still technically March, so I've not been able to start a new pair of socks for her. It is almost tomorrow. It is almost April. I've got my yarn wound. She's been talking about it for at least a week. But How I sad finished... she is that she can't have another <laughs> set of uh I finished these socks. on the plane. They're just plain socks. Did you start them on the plane, too? No, I started them before. Okay. I was going to say, if you create that's an pretty, entire... That's pretty fast for me. Six I hours? I don't think so. I, I know. Yeah. Or I actually, was... it was only four hours and 20 minutes for the flight. Okay. So then I started these and finished them while I was on vacation. Love that. This is my Revolution Girl style now. Colorway. Colorway, yes. Yep. Still my favorite. And... 
Then I finished those purple stripy ones I showed earlier. Before I left, I finished this for my mom's special request. It's the basket case cowl in the same colorway, Revolution Girl Stone Elf. I just love this. It's a great colorway. I just and it's thing. also a good height and, you know, size for the cowl. Yes. I like that a so lot. So she also probably can't wear this much, although it did snow yesterday, so maybe she it can. It did! After being, what, 70 degrees the day before? Yeah, it was yeah, pretty warm. Yeah, 70 degrees two days ago. Snowed yesterday. That's Indiana for you folks. Good stuff. Yes. All right, so then I have several pairs of fingerless mitts that I made on vacation. We have some regular Revolution Girl Style Elf and the basic. And then another basic. This one is in, I've got finesse coming out of my bottom. And this is five by five. All the basic again. And then <laughs> this one is... Uh, in the five by five chart, and it's um, this is I Starry Starry one. Night, and then this is Soul Man. Mm -hmm. So I like those a lot. Got that, and then because <laughs> I love making bits and they're just fun and easy to carry. Uh, this is a power up chart, Starry Starry Now again. I also like that one. Or Starry Starry Night. So those are in the shop. I don't get to wear them. Although I would like to, so I might have to make myself some, but we'll see. Um, I think that's everything I finished. Do you have any current projects? Yeah, current projects. Current projects. Works in progress. So I'm actually in the midst of a cowl. Um, so the same size and shape as the one that the basket weave one that Mary Ann was showing, but this one has got the wh which one is this? Power, power up, up chart. Power up chart. Yeah, um, in it. So. Uh, it will it will just have the one chart. So I could have done it in each of the panels or just had it in the one, which is what I chose to do. And I'm looking forward to that. And this is not Soul Man. This is, it is Soul oh, Man. Oh, see, Soul Man. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Beautiful colorway. Beautiful pattern. Nice. Yeah. All right. I'm still working on my um, down the road and back again. It's a little bigger than it was before, but I mm -hmm. spent so much time making mitts and socks that it's not a lot further along. Yeah, a cowl. You made a whole cowl, too. Oh, that was the revolution. Yeah, okay. And then I've been working on my blanket a little bit. And I've added another row around, and I've started... It's getting Well, bigger. I'm not finished with the fourth row around. I'm working on it. Yeah, it's getting bigger. It is bigger. Mm -hmm. Is it in there somewhere? Yeah. And you can bring it a little bit my way, too, to show a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's getting bigger. Getting bigger. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, that is all my current projects, because I'm waiting for tomorrow to start some socks. Tomorrow's going to be so hard. Okay, so <laughs> another request we had was not technically a question, but it was to select an item off of my shelves and talk about it. So I'm going to pick this movie, because somehow... It has come up several times in normal conversation with my friends. So, Dead and Breakfast. Dead and Breakfast. It is a lovely musical film with zombies mm -hmm. and a, like, rockabilly, hillbilly zombie band, which does, like, mm -hmm. narrations in between certain scene cuts. Mm -hmm. So, classy film. Also, David Carradine has a, an important role to play in this movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, oh yeah, there's a zombie a dance scene. Yeah. Zombie dance scene that I've watched many times. And I'm going to yeah. make, I'm working on a colorway actually named after that since we've been talking about it so much yeah. lately. So. And looking at Mary's shelf, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to choose. And what stood out to me was, <laughs> for some reason, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Which I have not seen in a very, very long time. However, I did not know that there was a bogus journey oh, yes. that followed that up. So yeah. I'm going to have to see this. Um, I, it's, yeah, just kind of caught my eye. I do know that they're coming out with a new a new version. I don't know if it's a remake. Is it a remake? No. Or is it like a continuation? Part three. Ah, part three. Part so, three. So, I mean, we, we might have to rewatch these just so we can prepare for part oh, yeah. three. I have many classic films over here. If you have any <laughs> questions about any of them, right. also I have several VHS on the bottom you cannot see because <laughs> I'm 
totally not an old lady at all. No. Uh huh. No. Um. <laughs> Okay, oh yeah, uh, our Minilong. Nobody gave us any hats, it was very sad. And also, we're kind of slackers and we didn't make any hats either. <laughs> well, she made a hat, but, but I not made, for the Minilong. Yeah, so I we still have all of our prizes. Yeah, we do. We'll which, do that another um, time. Yeah, or I can give one away if you um, want to comment on our on our video for us. I'll give, I'll give away one, one to the first person that comments. We'll do that. Okay. I guess we can just randomly pick, or if you remember what they were from that last episode, you can tell me which one you want, and we'll, I'll send it to you. You'll have to get me your, okay, anyways, we'll do that, we'll do that later. Um, and then we also did, um, Myers-Briggs personality test just for a random interest. Yeah, a friend of mine asked me to complete that test, um, the Myers-Briggs personality test, and it's, I mean, it's obviously not anything that is psychologically accurate or anything That's like fun, that. Though. It is really just for fun and it kind of tells you what kind of personality group you're in. And it's really creepy at how <laughs> starkingly well, accurate, accurate it seems to be. Some of it's pretty good. Some of it's pretty plus, accurate. Plus I like my picture because, oh, oh, you can't oh, see can't it. can't see it. Can't see it. But, but he's got a sword. Yeah. No, and I should see. totally have a sword. I should totally you have should. a sword. You should. And you are. Because I like shiny things. You are oh, yeah. a... Uh, E-N-F-J-T, mm -hmm. which says I'm a diplomat. And yeah. then it does uh, have... Protagonist, I thought, right? Yeah, protagonist, diplomat... Then, oh, diplomat, gotcha. Social. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is interesting. And then we they do percentages for stuff. So yeah, they do. So I got 58% extroverted. So... Just over the edge. I'm more extroverted than introverted because mm -hmm. I like people. But we've got a lot of stuff similarly close, which right. is so interesting. We can kind of, we can kind of <laughs> yeah, compare yeah. here. So um, I am the campaign campaigner, and so I'm also an, a diplomat, but I'm an ENFPT. So really, the only that we only have one thing that's different um, between the two of us. But uh, social engagement is my strategy, apparently. That's what I got. Yeah. So extroverted, you are how many? What percent? Fifty-eight. I'm fifty-one percent. It is pretty close. It is pretty close. And then okay for energy, which is where you direct your mental energy. Mm-hmm. I got seventy percent intuitive. I got the exact same number actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're the same on that one. Okay, nature determines how you make decisions and cope with emotions. I got seventy-four percent feeling. Eighty-three percent feeling. I, I have all the feels. All the feels. <laughs> and then tactics, how you approach work, planning, and decision making. I got 61% judging, which just says decisive, thorough, and organized. And we have decided that that is very accurate because I am I not. Like I am not a list person. I am not as organized. I have had to make myself with my work <laughs> and with my home. I have had to make myself make lists and stick to them and things. But I that made, I have way too that, many lists, actually. That made sense that that was the only place that we differed, was that I am actually 69% percent prospecting. And so um, I'm good at improvising and, and spotting opportunities, tend to be flexible, re uh, relaxed, uh, nonconformists who keep prefer keeping their options open. I don't know about necessarily that, but I do feel like the list thing, definitely, like that's definitely her. I like so. organizing. If you'll notice... Alphabetized. It is alphabetized. Everywhere is alphabetized. It is alphabetized. Okay. It's pretty great. It's refreshing for me. And she keeps me on track that way. <laughs> it's great. We complement each other really well with that. Okay, and then identity, which says, underpins all the other traits showing how confident you are in your abilities and decisions. Mm -hmm. And I got 64% turbulent, meaning self-conscious and sensitive to stress. And I'm 53% with that. So I do feel like uh, maybe that's also true because I feel like I am more of a go with the flow type person. And if you ever drive with Mary and you're ever in traffic or someone cuts her off, <laughs> she's got a little bit of road rage. But I won't let say. them know that I'm yelling at them. I yell at them in my car with the windows closed and it just makes me feel better. But people riding with you hear you. Okay. <laughs> and then we can discuss that. Then we can know, discuss that. That's wanna, right. Should you want to discuss that, it makes That's you right. feel. <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, it was just entertaining. Yeah, it was. And yeah. just and to see like you know different people in our lives that you know uh, whether they match up or yeah complete opposite her husband's complete opposite basically yeah yeah that. <laughs> anyways it was, it was just interesting yeah yeah 
It was good. Yeah. Alright, so last, we've decided we're going to pick a super fight. We're going to pick super fight battles. People. So if you've never played that game, Super Fight. This is going to be coming up on Drunk Game Night for us, so we're like pre-gaming here. And we're going to pick our people and our random yeah, just attributes. Ra random attribute. And, and you... then we're going to discuss who we think would win, and we want you to tell us who you think would win. Um, and why okay. you think that person would win. Okay. Alright, so I'm not pulling them out and shuffling. That was lazy. But let's see. Let's randomly pick... She's randomly picking. Three. Oh, you're picking three. That's how we do it when we're playing at home. That's true. And three. Ooh, these are all going to be dirty. They're red. I can see it now. Oh, no. Here, you They're going to be dirty cards. Pick three. Oh, I have to pick three? Yes. So you okay. pick three, and then you choose one of those. Random, random, random. This is two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a little closer to the pile here. Okay, and then three. you pick one. And then... I always forget the rules. I have to, like, revisit the rules every time I play this. Because it is just... Like I don't like any of mine. Oh no, but you you have to stick with it, Mary. You have to stick with it. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Isn't there like a question that gets read or no? No, this is just Oh you yeah, one no, of these and one I'm of these of cards and then you draw a random attribute which then gets applied that you have no say in whatsoever. So <laughs> These are making me laugh. <clears throat> this. this, and then I'm gonna draw a random card. Uh, no, that's offensive. <laughs> I'm not gonna read that on our podcast. Okay. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not bad. Gosh. You this selected is, one. I, I can't like, tell you mine until you choose yours. Okay, so what? Where, where do I choose? And then just discard them. I'll put them away later. Okay, but what am I choosing? What, what you choose one black one and one white one, and then a random black one. A random black one. Okay. Is it random? Is it, is it okay to read on the air? Yes. Okay, we can read this yes. to the public. Okay. I have many um, extra supplemental packs of cards, and some of them are not that you know general population friendly, but they're good for drunk game night. So, all right. My person okay. is uh, your creepy uncle. He also has pyrokinesis. And my random attribute is that he is piloting an attack drone. So. Okay. Who am I fighting? You are fighting Carrie. Ooh. Yeah. Carrie, and she is armed with a porcupine cannon and also armed with a cattle prod. Okay, but I'm in a, an attack drone, so you're not going to be able to really damage me with too much of that. That's true. So I think I think just having the attack drone but I feel alone like, will help. But I feel like my creepy uncle... Well, first of all, the creepy uncle I'm thinking of is in jail. So I don't know that he could even drive anywhere or fly yeah. anywhere. But some people have creepy uncles that would not even know how to do it. Okay, so, so maybe you're saying this is like a shoddy prison yard... <laughs> Right. Need attack right. drone, and you know so what? It might not Carrie, be the best protection. Carrie has some mental powers that she can like. I have pyrokinesis. Yeah, well, that's only with fire. But you're not protected by anything. I'm Although protected she does... by a porcupine cannon that I can shoot at you. I don't want to light porcupines with. on fire. They're cute. And a cattle prod. Yeah, but I'm in my shoddy prison attack drone, so you can't really get me. I can throw it at you. I can make my mind throw it at you. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> okay, so who do you think would win? Yeah. This is seriously. what we need to know. This is important. I feel like I would win. Important battle. But I always feel like I would win no matter what I choose. So So who wins? Who wins? We need you to tell us. All right, that's the last of our random stuff. And then I'm going to talk about yarn. So if you don't want to hear about my uh, shop yarn, then, you know, you can stop watching right now. Anyways, yarn. Yarn. So the... Big thing this month is I'm putting out um, sparkle, sparkle yarn, sparkle yarn. Yes. So all the colorways that are out will be available in a sparkle base. Uh, it's a sock weight, and I'm calling it Spark of Madness, and all the details are on the website. Um, so the newest colors all have one sample mm -hmm. uh, pictured in the shop, and as I get time to dye extras, and as I dye to get ready for the McVention coming up um, in August. 
I'll put new pictures of every other colorway up. But for now, the other ones just have a picture of the bear yarn in it, so you can still click on it and see the sparkle. It just won't have the color on it yet. All right, so the first one I've got is They Can't Get Me Down, which is fluorescent, safety orange. Safety orange. Safety it is orange. very fluorescent. It is some bright... I don't know that the camera can even capture no, the I think amount we're, of we're fluorescent. Losing, yeah, we're losing sunlight, so yeah, it's getting a little dark, but it is. Safety, it's safety orange. It is. Okay. Emergency orange. And it's died off of a um, naked aggression song because I love them. And they can't get you down, really. All right. This one, okay, I dyed it before they made their announcement, but it is a supernatural inspired colorway. It's just called The Road So Far. I really like that one a lot. And there's some blue for all the flannels they've worn and some red for the blood. Family don't end in blood. And then there's bring it, bring it to the right. black and gray. Black and gray for baby, of course. And a little bit of white for Castiel and the angels. Beautiful. So, yeah. Variegated. And then we have Bride of the Monster, which is one of my um, black and white movie inspired twists. Of course, Bride of Frankenstein. And it's got like a lavendery pink purple with uh, the black and gray of um, of the old films. I also love that one. I just love those old films so much. The variety of films, all right? And then we have our Dr. Horrible colorway, Crazy Random Happenstance. Dr. Horrible. Which is a light blue for his eyes. And then white and gray for, you know, his lab coat outfit. <laughs> it's a twist dye one. So, that's it. I don't have as many colors this time because I was out of town most of the month. It's hard to dye. And then I do have a new um, sock blank up, which there's pictures of it, but it goes from white to red to gray to black. I wasn't sure sock what a sock blank. blank was. You want to talk about what a sock uh, blank just, is really quick? It's the same as my Four Plies of the Apocalypse base, but it comes pre-knit into a long rectangle. And um, I know I've already packaged it. I'm sorry. And this one's just dyed to kind of fade from color to color a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. And so when you someone would order that and they would take like take the yarn out and make their project with it. Well, right? it depends. Like you, some they people would unravel it. Some people will unravel it uh -huh. and soak it to get any of the kinks out. Some people just knit straight from the sock blank. So oh, okay. Okay. It Instead of like a ball like. of yarn, they would knit it from the sock blank. Yes. There we go. Okay. And I think that's it. But if you want sparkle yarn, She's tomorrow, actually tomorrow, because tomorrow is the first. That's right. She'll so. have the, well, I mean, by the time this gets out, it'll probably be about then, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Before anybody watches this. That's right. All right. I think that's it. And we need more questions. If you have yes, more questions, do. if there's any book or movie you'd like to hear about. Oh, I did also get a new book I didn't tell you about. Oh, yeah. Unladylike. Unladylike. Field Guide to Smashing the Patriarchy. So. You know, we'll get some good tips out of there. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, well, as always, guys, uh, happy, happy crafting. crafting.